I'd like to just share Affinity Designer and some tools that I, I really didn't look at too much. And when I found them, that I, they actually changed quite a bit of my uh, workflow and speeded up things quite a bit. Usually when I opened up a pixel-based image, so let's say we're taking this image, which is a raw file, it's just bringing it into Affinity Designer. So if I have this image and I want to cut something out, usually um, uh, I'm in Affinity as such. I used to go and now, trust me, I'm doing this extremely rough because this isn't the part of the process I want to show. But I would do something like this. Where, and I did a tutorial previously on how to actually do this part of the process where you can manipulate the actual path that you're using of the pen tool but you'd take the the image in the background you'd select it just make sure the lock is off so I select the image uh, control X to delete it and then I still have the the actual pen outline here what you do is select the pen outline choose this last one that says insert inside the selection if I click that while I have this selected here so it's enabled there now and I press Control V to paste the image that I just deleted back in there it basically places it inside this area so I could go and with further refinements kind of move the object and shape it into the areas that I want to you know the usual so um, I've done a tutorial on this particular process but often when you get to this, you're going to be able to have quite a bit of flexibility because you're working with a path. But, you know, you're not going to get the, the strands of hair on this side that you're seeing here, being able to accommodate them effectively. Um, you, you're not going to be able to cut out there. And there's no refined tools here. So I'm going to just uh, go back to the history palette and take it all right back to the start. It's one of my favorite tools there. And remember, you can go forward and back again, but as soon as you take it right back and you do one edit, all the, the history goes away, which makes sense because you can't go back in time to the real start and start something new and then go further back. It doesn't make sense. But anyhow, uh, what I want to show you is now, most of the time we'd go and we'll say, okay, I'm going to unlock that layer and I want to cut it out. So we'll go to File and we'll say Edit in Photo which for those of you who use Illustrator you can click and link the editor to being Photoshop it will take it there you edit and then bring it back into Illustrator similar here you could click edit in photo Affinity has a very close integration it, it just when it moves over to the other one this one locks this image till you finish editing and it brings it back it's a beautiful workflow but in most cases you want to edit the thing without needing to go to the photo editing software. And Affinity has a what they call persona. So this is the draw persona. It has a pixel persona and, of course, a export persona. But if you click on the pixel persona, and this is because you're working on a pixel-based image. Okay, so there I'm on a pixel-based image. If I was working on a vector that I created and then clicked on the persona and wanted to edit, it would have to convert that that uh, vector into pixel base for me to edit it. But in this case, I'm working here on a, let me call this lady. I'm working on this pixel image. So I go to pixel persona and you'll watch here on the left hand side, the tools will all change here to something similar to what you used to when you're editing pixel based images. Now, this is not a, an extensive you, uh, list of tools. You can go to the setting and go and say customize tools and it will give you the tools if there are any tools further available will be there I'm going to just go back there where did I go just disable that so these tools are here if you want to get more in depth with editing of pictures then of course you go to the the photo tool uh, the photo program affinity photo but 60 70 80 percent of my work I can actually do coming to this pixel persona so i can go and do selections i can do smudging i can do sharpening the the usual sort of quick tools that you want to use so in my case i want to cut out this image so i need to have a ability to select this tool 
uh, get a selection tool, select the area, and then do a refinement. So how do I do that? Here is a selection brush. If I go and if I select the outside here, then I'm going to have to click select and invert because the selection would be of the outside and not the actual object. So in this case here now, I look at my layers, make sure that we pixel base, it's not locked. And then I start with my selection here. And the selection works pretty much in the same way. And don't be too over cautious. I let go of the mouse so I can start a new rundown on the area. Now you might be tempted to change the brightness or the exposure of the image at this stage, but don't do it. Get used to doing the cutout and the exposure that you can do later by adding a, an adjustment layer. Or the adjustment layer exists also in the draw persona. So I'd, I'd rather do the cutout here, take it back to draw persona and add the adjustment there. So I'm going to go down here. And same thing applies. You press Alt and then it reverses the selection. So I'm going to just square bracket to size it there and Alt again. And we're going to try and get a, a reasonable setting there. And here we have to release the Alt and just go straight down. We're going to try and get that. Pretty much got that area. Okay, and we mustn't select the shadow, of course, here. So I'm going to go Alt. Just cut away that. So pretty much the normal selection process that you're familiar with. Don't worry too much about this because that is the reason why we're actually coming to the draw persona, the pixel persona, is because we're going to use the refine tool. Okay, so we click the refine tool. Now the tutorial is not about how to cut out an image and make perfect air strands. That you'll find on other tutorials. You can set your border width, your smoothness, feather, etc., ramp. Um, I'm going to leave it on overlay because it gives me a nice red contrast for me to see the hair areas. Um, and I'm going to do a, a rough cleanup. One of the things that you can experiment with after doing these settings is to always check whether you're selecting more of the background and a little bit of the subject you want to preserve to see if it cleans it up or more of the subject and a little bit of the background to see if it preserves. So in this case now, I am going to make a square bracket and I want this white area between the air to be removed. So I'm going to tell the program basically that it must select. It's red here at the moment because I've got it on overlay. But to select this background area, which is uniform white, and I'll go on to the hair so it, where it finds the white in between the hair, it's going to want to say it's part of this background, so remove it from this area. So let's go, and I'm going to start doing a nice big sample there and then going a little bit onto the hair. So before I let go of my left mouse button, what I'm telling the thing here, and, and this is just to test if it will work, I'm telling it that this whole area at the back here is the area that is of concern, so measure everything according to that. When it looks at the hair, the hair looks totally different to this back, uh, whereas the white areas between the hair look similar to this, so it will separate the two. So if I let go of the mouse button, you should see uh, pretty much, can you see the red showing through the hair nicely there? Uh, how I take it from here, I'll go to selections and say create a new layer with a mask. So it's going to create this object with a mask, etc. Okay, that's how I find I use it a bit best. And then I say apply. If we look in a layer palette here, it will create a new layer. So the old layer will be um, sort of deselected. It's busy processing. So this old layer has been deselected. If I switch it on, you can see it's there. So there we have the object with, with a cutout. So at this stage here now, you can go and add an adjustment layer. But what I would do is take it back into my draw persona. So if I click on draw persona, boom, there it's back. That whole thing is back there. So I haven't even taken it out of this program to another pixel edit program like uh, Affinity Photo or into Photoshop. Having said that, I repeat myself, if you are going to do intense editing with lots of effects and everything like that, then it makes sense to take it to the photo edit program. But in this case here now, I'm extremely happy with this. So yeah, I have the image and now I can go to the adjustment layer, click that and instead of exposure, I'll just use brightness and pop up the brightness and 
basically I have a beautiful clean photo to use and I've stayed all in Affinity Designer um, and I can go do my nice whoops what have I done I want to click a crop button yeah so I can maybe go here we go with a nice if I wanted to do that for example as my object um, and there I have it nice cleaned out and I'm busy using it now I have a shortcut key I have just made the in button on its own no modifying keys which will create a new document from the actual selection so there are keys to do this so if you click on here if I go to file I say you can see I made it a shortcut key new from clipboard so I go click that I'll say control C to copy it and if I press in it takes it to a new page but you notice the interesting thing is it doesn't copy over the adjustment layer also okay so you must just be uh, aware about that uh, if we do go to checking out the adjustments you probably have to go back into it uh, and go and set your adjustment again for that particular image okay but that uh, copy and paste to new that is a standard thing with affinity which I totally love so if I'm editing on a small piece I just pop it out create its independent image okay I'm just close that so here we have it and if you want to keep it here and make this the only image you're working on just a quick tip again I'll go to artboard I'll say insert artboard and then click the move tool and click outside to deselect it and then you click the artboard and then of course you can actually size the artboard accordingly just pull it down to where you want to and now you have a, a beautiful artboard with that image as a full image in there okay so just to recap if you are busy working with an object pixel based that you want to do a a selection tool and cut out uh, or even use any of the other tools that are kind of available in the pixel persona it's a matter of going and clicking pixel persona having access to them doing them uh, once you're done editing here you like if you have yeah what's this uh, this is a a blur tool so if I wanted to go and blur over here now I can just go and add a blur on the edges which is a like a Photoshop editing feature you wouldn't do that with vector art so if I had to do that blur there and then I want to go back they are basically back and the effect is added on there it is brilliant I didn't use it too much now I use it routinely if I don't have a happy result from availability of tools here then of course I'll go and edit in Affinity Photo. So hopefully this has helped you and uh, you'll see some use for it. It just might help increase your workflow uh, for jobs going forward. So as usual, if you enjoyed this, share it with other people. Share the knowledge. It always helps everybody save a few minutes and adds a few minutes onto their lifespan. They can spend more time with their family and less with designing if you improve their workflow. So have a fantastic day and God bless you.